Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Map Publisher, it's a mapping application that plugs into Adobe Illustrator. Uh, we use it at the State Department because it allows us to open, process, project, and manipulate geospatial data in a geographic space, all while maintaining the full graphics functionality of Illustrator. We use many other programs at State, but uh, mapping programs, uh, but I find myself using Map Publisher a, a good deal, if not most of the time. Uh, one issue that I have run into, though, uh, with, with making, making maps in Map Publisher is orthographic and as mutual equidistant projections. Uh, it doesn't seem to project them very well. Unfortunately, it makes me very sad because I love the program. Uh, when Map Publisher projects the world in a custom orthographic projection, it wraps the lines, points, and polygons around the horizon so they're still visible and selectable. That's not really what I want. I want something a little bit more like that, uh, where the polygons are, are cropped at the horizon line. It would seem like a simple solution would be to remove the data beyond the horizon by cropping out from the world data set before executing the orthographic projection. However, that's easier said than done because when I try to create a horizon line by calculating 90% from my custom center point in an azimuthal equi equidistant projection, I run into the same issue of data wrapping back around the edges of the projection. It's kind of odd for an azimuthal equidistant because there are no edges on it. Uh, I'm told that this is, has something to do with the fact that you know, the world's an ellipsoid and the projections are done uh, with ellipsoid datum, which is a good thing because the world is not a perfect sphere. Uh, but in this situation, it's, these projections are somewhat unusable. So I worked uh, a little bit with uh, Avenza, the Avenza team to try and work out a way to be able to still make globes uh, in Map Publisher. So this is my process for doing that. I hope it's useful here. Uh, first thing I want to do is, is determine your center point. I mean, one of the things you want is to be able to project it from anywhere in the world. So here I've chosen a point that's 100 degrees east, 70 degrees north. I wanted to be able to show in the end, you know, how you know, something, is actual land transformation instead of doing something down in the South Pacific. Uh, throughout this process, I want to maintain a WGS84 coordinate system. So what you'll be seeing me do is uh, taking this WGS84 and I'm going to duplicate it and then project that duplication every time I do a, a projection transformation here. So that's basically what this is. I'm going to duplicate the layer, duplicate the map view, and close that down so this will be easier to see. And then I'm going to go in and edit the map view here. And we're going to perform a, a coordinate system transformation. Uh, you go into coordinate systems, go to projected, world, and then I'm going to select the Lambert as mutual equidistant sphere. You'll notice the one below it doesn't say anything, but that is the one that is an ellipsoid. So we don't want to use that because it'll give the results that I showed earlier. I rename it. I put in the custom coordinates under the definition. And then we project it. So here we have a spherical or a, based on a sphere uh, as mutual equidistant projection with our center point there highlighted. So what we want to do now is we want to be able to crop out the half of the Earth that we, would, we don't want to see. So what we're going to do is use the buffer tool, which is highlighted in the upper center part of the screen there. And we are going to crop out, we're going to measure out one quarter of the distance of the Earth. And the sphere uh, datum that's used is an autholic sphere. It has a circumference for the Earth as 40,009.92 kilometers. So one quarter of that is what I have entered here under the static, uh, static value of 10,248.48 kilometers. And then we're going to name this new, this new buffered line, we're going to call it horizon line. And you get something like that, which is great, except for its four points, its four Bezier curves. Uh, and that doesn't really export very well, usually for uh, shape files. So we go in and we're going to use path utilities. I have it highlighted there. And under actions, we want to try convert Bezier curves to polygons or polylines. And now it's changed over to point to point. And we're going to go ahead and export that to uh, your hard drive or wherever, wherever you want to so we can pull it back to uh, the WGS84 coordinate system that we were originally working off of. We then import that line that we just created, the horizon line. And it's going to look something like this. Uh, it closes off the point, and it closes off uh, the polygon. So we want to go ahead and delete that closing line. So we just have a sine wave here. 
And unfortunately, it's hanging off the artboard. That doesn't help us much, but it's a very easy solution. We just go to, that, to the edge of the artboard there, and we just cut the line. And then you take that part of the line that's off the artboard and move it onto the artboard to the opposite side. And I say opposite side, not the left-hand side, because it's going to vary depending on where your, point in the, where your center point is around the world. Sometimes it might go off the, the left-hand side instead of the right. We're going to line it up on the left-hand side, or in, this, in this situation, on the opposite side of the artboard, like that. Now, if you look closely, there's one little segment here on the sine wave that's right over Cuba. We're going to just go ahead and close that off. Then the next thing we need to do is make a polygon from that sine wave to enclose the area uh, that we want shown, and so we can isolate the area that's going to be on the, on the opposite side of the globe. Then we export that because we want to save that for later use if we need to import data later. All right, so we're going to go back through. We're going to duplicate because we're going to do another projection here. Uh, we're duplicating the, the illustrator layers, and we're also going to duplicate the map view. And because we're about to reproject this, so now we still have WGS84 uh, original data that's turned off. Now this is the duplicate. Uh, we go ahead and use that horizon line polygon that we created to crop out the other side of the Earth that we don't need. And we only want to crop out just that one uh, map view, not the other map views. And you get this result. Then we're going to go ahead, go in, and we're going to do our orthographic transformation. So I rename it Ortho Map Publisher View or MP View, whatever you want to name it. Uh, and we do a coordinate system transformation. And we're back in that interface again. When coordinate system is projected, world, and then just choose the orthographic projection. Change the name. We put in our custom uh, you know, coordinates, whatever they are. And you get that. You get an orthographic projection with a horizon line. It needs a little bit of cleanup. Just need to get rid of that little line there. Voila, and you can use that horizon line, obviously, for water. The great thing about this and why I like to use Map Publisher, again, I'm an Illustrator person. Um, I could date myself by saying, actually, I'm really a freehand person, but that's been <laughs> going for a long time. <laughs> oh, that's. Um, but the great thing is that this still maintains all the attributes. So you can still go and select lines by you know, whatever category it is that, that's in the attribute field. And you know you can go ahead and add in a gradient fill to give it a little bit of a 3D look, or you know highlight Russia for whatever reason. One of the things you can, one of the things that's nice though is once you've got this, I mean, once you project into an orthographic or into an azimuthal equidistant, you really can't go back, but you can go forward. So if you need to add more data, if you're looking at the polar ice cap, which is maybe not a good example because that would probably be totally contained within this image, but if you wanted to bring in extra data. You can just go back to your WGS84, bring in the shapefile data, crop it again, and then bring it in to the end result here. So here I've got some natural earth uh, populated places. I go ahead and use my horizon line to, to crop out just that layer of new data that I'm adding. So now it's just the points there. Oops, go ahead and move it into the ortho projection, the map view there, and it automatically projects it. Turn back on all layers, and here we go. We have all the points that are projected on there. I can go in and I can select just the US or just the capitals and then restyle those capitals. And again, with the attributes, I can go in and put names, and we have a god awful ugly map, which I would never put out there, but it just, you know, you, can, you get the idea that you can keep on manipulating this, adding and changing data over time. That's my talk. Um, I put a little cheat sheet on there because it's probably a lot to write down if you, want to, if you ever need this. Um, I'm not sure where to put it, so I'll put it on my personal site. Um, but it's just a Word document that takes you through every step of the way there. So thank you. All right, we have a few minutes for questions. I see some hands. For the sine wave closure, um, did you use a copy of your geometry from the sine wave on the other side, or did you just command join the two endpoints? Yeah, I just, I just clipped it, clip it at the artboard, and then just drag it across, and I snap it to the other side. Okay. Um, so you know, it's right, I do it by the number, so it's right on the edge of it. Um, but then, yeah, you just, I mean, you got shift key, hold it down so it stays at that. Well, you could do it by the numbers, and it would go over to the other side, but yeah, and then I, then I join it. I saw a hand, okay. Dan Streeby. So uh, I didn't understand certain aspects of the explanation of why there is even a problem, and so I'm not sure that my 
question is terribly relevant. But the end map that you showed, the orthographic, is not a full hemispheric orthographic. It's somewhat cropped smaller than that. Was that intentional? Or is that an artifact of your method? Or is it just something that happened? The last part of that I, I, I didn't hear as far as the, it was incomplete. Right, the orthographic that you show is not a full hemisphere. Is, it's, it's a little short of a full hemisphere. Was that intentional or was that just the way your method works or? I didn't notice that it was less than the full hemisphere. It should have been a full hemisphere. Oh, okay. it, should be 100, it should be 180 degrees. It, it looks a little less. I'll have to go back and check. All right, yeah. sure. Any other questions? Vanessa, you've used up your question quota. I, guess I, just want, I wanted to say thank you because, because I am new to Map Publisher and I had, I've run into that before and I just want to say thanks because I will use this. Thanks. Sorry. In theory, could you just take that sign curve and create a sign frame and then move it anywhere on the map based on where you, where you want your center point and then crop to that section to create your own orthographic? No, I don't think, well, because it, de it depends on where your center point is. So, I mean, that sine wave that was created for that is specifically calculated from, you know, you're doing an azimuth or equidistant, so you have to project it from wherever that, that point is. So, by moving it afterwards, it wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't line up, I wouldn't think. Okay. Ooh, I have a, sorry, another, <laughs> for Avenza maybe, maybe Avenza will create an automated script for that possibly. Maybe. That, that was actually something I talked about with some, <laughs> some colleagues is, I mean, if, if well, they're, again, you know, the, um, I, I, I think, hearkening back to an earlier question about, about the ellipsoid versus the sphere, um, yeah, I'm not a mathematician, uh, and I, I, I know it's difficult to try and figure out, you know, from a center point, with, working with an egg, I know that other programs uh, have done it, but I know the math on that's pretty, pretty complicated because it depends on where your center point is within that egg that uh, your horizon line is going to be. So uh, the, 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 the irony here is that I don't think you could make a, I don't think anybody could ever see the difference no matter how big you made the sphere between a sphere and a spheroid when you're talking about the entire globe. So um, I, I can't answer to what, what, why the math behind that doesn't work, but I just know that's been a long-term problem. Um, and. I can now actually, you know, create orthographic maps with data on it and change the data. So that makes me happy, selfishly. One more question. Nathaniel Von Kelso. Oh, man. <laughs> we used to work together. Just more of a comment. I think Gene definitely can put Dennis to shame in terms of halos on maps. We spent many a Saturday working on that. <laughs> all right well, that's it for questions thank you gene thank you all appreciate your time <laughs>